things up a little bit for today. As you can see, this is obviously a slightly different setup than what you're used to seeing me on. <laughs> this is the Roland TD30, and uh, we had an opportunity to bring this into the studio to try it out, and uh, I gotta tell you, I, I love this little thing. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun to play, it sounds great, and you know, as a teaching tool, it's even better because it allows us just to you know, like turn down the volume, so I don't have to, I don't have to wear earplugs, I don't have to use brushes, it's pretty cool. So we're actually going to do a video to talk about this whole kit and uh, really kind of give you a behind the scenes look at it because it's, it's really kind of neat. But uh, for this video we're going to talk about System of a Down's Revenge. We're going to explain the whole the ride hi-hat pattern that's going on through the verse. Been getting a lot of questions on YouTube about that uh, particular part. It's kind of tricky but I think if we can you know kind of tear it down into its most basic components and show you exactly what's going on with each of those components it won't be quite as intimidating. Because I think what really throws it over the top for most people is the ride pattern. Number one, I'm not sure if, if it can you know, totally figure out exactly what's going on in it just because of the sheer speed of the song and stuff like that. But then to be able to try and bring that in with what's going on elsewhere in the body can be a real challenge. So I think the best way to approach it is to think of it as three separate components. One being our feet because they are playing together just uh, you know, kind of like a four on the floor uh, on the beat. Just, you know, one, two, three, four, you know, very, very simple. The second component would be our left hand, which is playing on the offbeat or on the end of every count, on the open hi-hat, coming down on the two and the four on the snare. Third component would be that syncopated ride pattern. For the sake of learning this whole part, I want to kind of break it down into just two parts. So we're going to focus on basically left side and right side. So like I said, you know, the feet are just playing together, just on a you know, basic four on the floor type thing. Then we've got this kind of half, uh, you know, on the, on, on the half of the beat or on the upbeat, this whole sort of almost like a disco kind of feel with our left hand. Okay, that's all that's happening with that is we're playing on the one and two and three and four and one. With that, or from that, we want to start bringing in the snare on the two and the four. This part, or this component of this part in particular, can be a little bit tricky if you're not used to this style of playing. Something that can be referred to as like an open-handed style of playing, where you're doing a lot of timekeeping with your left hand, as opposed to crossing over and keeping it with your right. What's cool about this, I mean, just as an exercise and having nothing to do with this particular song, is that this can really open up a lot of creative doors for you, because by play, you know, playing and keeping time with your left hand, it allows you to move independently around the kit with your right hand, without having to you know, do this kind of thing. So it can be really cool, like I said, just a great exercise on its own. Having said that, if this is the first time you're really kind of trying this, I mean, if for example, you're a right-handed player who's more right dominant by way of always crossing over and keeping time with your right hand, doing the downbeats with your left, this might be a little bit tricky for you at first because not only are we keeping time with our left hand, but we're actually keeping it on the and of every beat, you know, like that one and two and. A little bit tricky if you're not used to that sort of feel. So just take your time with that and get really comfortable. I mean, just don't even worry about the snare yet. Just get really comfortable with keeping the time with that uh, not offbeat. One, and two, and three, and four. Okay? From there, we want to bring the snare in on the two and the four, like I said. What you really need to focus on for this is to make sure that you're really tight with your timing moving from the hi-hat to the snare, but then from the snare back to the hi-hat. <laughs> it can be a little bit tricky as we start to ramp it up to proper speed, and I, and I really recommend you practice this part with a click. Maybe not start off if this is the first time trying to do this sort of thing, but as you start to develop it and really you know, work on your timing, it, working with a click is imperative. Because what you're going to find, the tendency may be, is that when you're going from the hi-hat to the snare, you might rush it. But then moving from the snare back to the hi-hat, you might actually lag a little bit, so it can really mess up your timing. And it's important not to, because I mean, this is really what's driving the whole beat of that song, while we're doing the syncopated thing over on the ride cymbal. If we don't have this tight, this is just going to be a mess. It's not all going to come together and sound good. <laughs> so just focus on that. I mean, like I said, we're just doing the four on the floor on the and or on the up with our left hand on the open hi-hat and then two and the four on the snare. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and two. 
really focus on that. Like I said, just concentrate on getting your timing and being really tight and efficient of moving back from back and forth between the hi-hat and the snare. Once you've got that, now we can kind of do the opposite and we're going to take the left hand out of it and just focus on the ride. What I think you might be surprised to kind of realize here is that the ride pattern itself is not that difficult. The pattern I'm going to show you is what I'm doing in my version of the cover. You know, now whether or not this is 100% exactly what John's doing in the song, you know, I don't really know, quite honest, but it's pretty close at least. And what's cool about this sort of thing is, you know, as I'm showing it to you here, is that if you can take this, you know, really get a hold of it and, and just kind of, you know, develop it from there. You know, you can, you can make it your own and just make it even better. You know, try different things, you know, switch it up and do all sorts of creative uh, different things with it that uh, can have a lot of fun with it. So the pattern is just simply this. On its own, not very difficult at all. When we put it against a beat, you can kind of see where the syncopated feel starts to come from, though. As you can hear with that, it's actually count three of the bar that will really kind of mess you up at first because. If you're used to just doing a lot of linear playing where you know, everything is kind of coming down together, you know, like all your downbeats and all your patterns and, and timekeeping and stuff is all in unison, then doing this pattern where we're on the beat through, we're actually kind of pulling back and holding a rest for that while everything else is moving, that's the part of that, that whole pattern that might kind of throw you off at first. So like I said, we want to just focus just on the right side right now, so once you get comfortable just with the kick drum and the ride, just bring in both feet focusing on making sure they are tight together with this pattern you're doing. Once you've got that down and solid, and once you've been working on the left side of it, now we can start to bring it all together at once. What I would recommend, though, is instead of just, you know, jumping right into it and trying to do the whole thing out of the gate, is still build it from the ground up. I mean, just start with the feet, start with the left hand, but instead of doing the, the actual pattern on, on the cymbal, just straight eights. So, kind of like this. doing the pattern. You just want to focus on getting the whole body moving together and, you know, tight and in unison. From that point of view, once you can do that by just keeping just straight eighth note timing with your right hand on the ride cymbal, while being able to move really quickly and efficiently with the left hand from the, the hi-hat to the snare and back again, keeping both feet tight, you know, working together, once you've got that down, now we can start to work on this whole syncopated pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to jump on the big kit and I'm going to show you exactly what's going on. I'm going to slow it right down so you can see you know, exactly what I'm doing and, and how the whole thing lines up and comes together. And if it helps you, if you want to go to, uh, go to the website, just click on the link. You can go download the PDF of the sheet music so at least visually you can kind of see exactly where everything lines up. From there, I mean, just really like, take your time with this. It's one of those parts that I think it, uh, it, it may be really, really challenging, but all of a sudden, you're just going to have it. Once you've got it, I mean, like I said, you, then you can kind of just make this your own, take it and develop it even further, and really start to explore some cool, you know, creative aspects and, and uh, you know, coordinated feels with this whole four-limb independence thing going on here. So have fun with this, and we will see you in the next lesson.